Assalamu alaikum fam. Hope you're doing well. So I'm almost done with this book and I wanted to discuss it with you because it is by one of my favorite scholars and it is Dr. Saleh Al-Fazwan. It's his Akida At-Tawheed, the creed of monotheism, an explanation of what negates it or diminishes from it, such as major and minor polytheism, innovations and others. He's a member of the Supreme Council of Scholars. The wonderful translator, who's done a fantastic job, is Muslim Amin. And I have to say, you should buy this book. Okay? I, I love this book so much. Um, I'm so happy I bought it. And I love watching this Sheikh scholar, Brilliant Mind, on Scholarly Subtitles channel. Uh, he's really informative. So I'm going to share some bullet points with you of things that I found quite compelling within the text. So one of them was, is that he noted, Good Akida is when your belief is free from doubt. The other one was, Akida is an action of the heart. And that Akida also means you have faith in the pillars of faith, which are faith in Allah, belief essentially, his angels, his books, his messengers, the day of judgment, and faith in the preordainment, the good and the bad of it. And that he noted the Sharia consists of belief related matters and action related matters. That was pretty cool because it's like the Sharia is about belief and action. So he gave us some cool uh, nuggets here, and one of them was is that the root of Akida is Al Akht. So, I hope I'm trying to say that right. A-L-A-Q-D. And he says it means to fasten something. How cool is that? So, think about it. To fasten something, if you have belief in something, you've definitely fastened it. You've definitely made it within you very tightly, right? Secure. And then he noted that when you have an act, he said, you have fixed it to your heart and mind. So... Right there, we see that Aqidah has a lot to do with the binding and belief, right? Soul belief. So when people say you have to have the right Aqidah, it's like you see their point. And essentially, it breaks down to what a person believes. And since it's an action of the heart, that's going to manifest in you as well. And you have to have this really firm affirmation of the set Aqidah that he mentions. And... Another cool point is that there is these nuggets on action. So he noted that actions, they're things like fasting, they are prayer, your salah, your charity, essentially. And that the beliefs is rubia, so lordship. So it's really cool. So there's lordship and worship with tawheed. It's amazing. I mean, this guy does such a good job on making Tawheed so clear that I can never not think of monotheism in this way. Because of this great man, may Allah have mercy on him, he's still alive today from what I saw. I haven't heard him dead. I hope he's not dead. That'd be horrible because I want to see more of his videos. But he has made me see what is pure monotheism, right? It is something that we think we know, but we don't know. Which is really puzzling, right? So, again, people think they get monotheism, but as I noted in other books, you think you know monotheism, but you haven't studied shirk, then you really don't know monotheism, I'd argue. So further, he notes here for us that the right akida is the basis upon which the religion is established, and along with it, deeds become valid. So, notice that. If you have the correct Akida, then your deeds become valid. So, if you don't have the correct Akida, then your deeds are not valid. That's very important. I mean, that's brilliant. So, what's cool about him too, is the, is the brilliant man, he gives us Quran citations. And I notice, with these great scholars, they refer to the Quran and the Sunnah, and then they give their commentary. And sometimes you can see what they mean and sometimes you can't. But with this guy, 
You definitely can. So, note this. So whoever hopes for the meeting with his Lord, let him work righteousness and associate none as partner in the worship of his Lord. So here, associate none as partner in the worship of his Lord. Quran 18, 110. Boom. It's Tawheed right there. See, you read it, and you see it's there. But when they break it down to you, you're like, it's there the whole time. So when someone says, I don't see Tawheed in the Quran, what are you talking about? This is a made-up concept by scholars. But when they point it out to you, you're like, duh, it's right in your face. And it's amazing how when it's revealed to you, you can never unsee it after that. Right? It's quite brilliant. He gives another Quran citation here. And it is, and indeed it has been revealed to you, O Muhammad, as it was to those, Allah's messengers, before you. If you join others in worship with Allah, then surely all your deeds will be in vain, and you will certainly be amongst the losers. Okay, so look at that. If you join others in worship with Allah, you can't do that, right? You can't do that. That would val invalidate Tawheed. And if you invalidate Tawheed, then you don't have the correct Aqidah. And if you don't have the correct Aqidah, then your deeds are invalid. So, it says right there. So, you see what he said? Like, it's right there. You know, it's right there on the page. It's, it's brilliant. So, it's like your deeds will be in vain. And what do the noble scholars say? Oh, well, if you don't have the correct Aqidah, then your deeds are invalid. It's like, wow. So, here's another one. So, worship Allah alone by doing religious deeds sincerely for Allah's sake only and not to show off and not to set up rival with him in worship surely the religion i.e. the worship and obedience is for Allah only so for Allah only for Allah's sake only so you twice you get this very very specific clear notification that you are to regulate your worship towards God alone. I mean, it couldn't be more clear, right? Oh, it's just, just, just amazing. And then there's other ones he cites as well, which is quite helpful. And so essentially, there's another word called Tawkifiya, which is based upon revelation. And then there was Ijtihad, deductive reasoning so essentially he really gets into the methodology of the Salaf um, he explains further on that you're supposed to have one Akida and what's cool is he notes that you're supposed to be united in your utterances I thought that's really cool that's really important you know what's interesting about him is when I read things like from the Founding Fathers in America, they kept talking about united. Genghis Khan talked about being united. If you notice something, anything that's great, they ask for unity. And unity makes you one whole solid unit. So here it's like, if you're one in your Akita, then you're more united. Because you're agreeing upon a foundational principle, right? And that he further encouraged us to make sure that we're correcting our doctrines and that we are unified in the methodology. So again, he really lays it out for us, truly. And again, he said that the Akida is Tawkifiya, which is based upon revelation. So you're going to look at the Quran and Sunnah and that you need to look for evidence from the lawgiver and... The opinions of Ijtihad, he noted, deductive reasoning, have no opportunity to wander therein. And so, he notes further that its sources are restricted to the Quran and Sunnah, as I mentioned earlier. And so further, he gives us more reasons why this should be, is that this is because there is none who has more knowledge about Allah and about what befits him and what does not befit him than Allah. Also, there is none after Allah who has more knowledge about Allah than the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So, notice that. Why do why is going to call our Prophet the final Messenger? It's because 
Nothing's coming after, so he has everything that we need to know. You don't get to take things away or say you don't need it anymore. You're gonna follow it and you're gonna establish it. Then he mentions here, this is why the methodology of the Salaf and those who follow their way at deriving the Akida is restricted to the Quran and Sunnah. So again, where is he deriving the Akida? Is from the Quran and Sunnah. Which makes sense because that's where you're gonna look. That's the founding text. That's where you're gonna get the most information. So he further goes on and says that whatever the Quran and the Sunnah pointed to about Allah, the Most High, they believed therein and acted by it. Whatever the Quran or Sunnah did not indicate about Allah, they negated from Allah and rejected it. So if it's not there, you have to negate it. And if it is there, you need to accept it as long as they have the evidence to back it up. So you really have to sift through the information and make sure that you're not overly differencing an opinion uh, regarding Akita and that you need to be make on, on on the same page essentially so it's one your single group as he notes and that is how you're gonna do it to make your faith really strong and then making sure you have the correct doctrine and the correct methodology so the correct methodology is gonna refer to the Quran and the Sunnah and I've also heard people mention the Sira the biography of the Prophet so again this is very interesting points here that I wanted to share with you, so I hope you think that's interesting.